Well, welcome to part two of the Process Juliet Syndicate. Let me just start off by adding my congratulations to those of my colleague on you being successful so far. However, now is not the time to relax and become complacent. The selection process still has a considerable way to run. In part two, uh, the candidates for the first time now come together into a syndicate and they remain within that syndicate for the whole of the part two exercises. The first exercise in the practical phase is a discussion exercise. It is said that the silicon chip is the greatest human invention since the wheel. What do you think? You have to acknowledge that the silicon chip and what it's going to bring to us in terms of advances in technology is going to be awesome. But equally, I think it can bring an awful lot of problems as well. We're going to become more and more lazy. Yeah, I think many. the invention of the wheel made us lazy, surely. Uh, possibly. <laughs> in the group discussion, we're looking to see how they react within the group situation, whether they're prepared to get involved, whether they can listen to the ideas of others, whether they're able to influence the group, whether they can make others listen to their ideas. I quite enjoyed the group discussion. Um, I was a member of the debating society when I was at school, so it helped a bit in formulating my argument on the spot. It's very tempting just to speak for the hell of it because you know at the end of the day that you are being assessed and if you sit there and say nothing, it's not going to look good. At the same time, it's important that if you do make a contribution, it's a valid one. Right, listen in, Julia, Syndicate, off you go now. Right, right. Okay, yeah. the middle. This particular exercise is a leaderless exercise. Certainly, as far as I saw, they were working very well as a team. Uh, we saw people who were prepared to actually have a go. Why don't we just tie one handle? We only need to tie one on handle one hand, onto yeah. that, pass it up to number four, who can then pull it through. Yeah. It was a lot of effort. They were working together, working for each other. They were listening to people who had ideas. Pull it in four. Wait, wait for a bit. What's a black? You lean over and grab it. Hold on, wait for a bit, wait for a bit. It's both a physical and a mental challenge. I think communication was the key to doing well on this exercise. Everybody sharing their ideas and then trying to suggest and take a plan of action. Um, and we did quite well. We got right to the end of the exercise. I'll give you 15 minutes for the private study period and your time starts now. Off you go. The planning exercise involves all of the candidates. And in this exercise, we generally put them into a fictional scenario present them with a problem and expect the candidates to come up with some solution. Did anyone pick up on the, the speed of the sample? Yeah, um, it, if you look at paragraph 6, um, it tells you there that when you're loading and unloading, it can only average 8 miles per hour. The Bolero could also do a maximum speed of 9 miles yeah. per hour. Yeah. In this particular planning exercise, uh, the Bolero. candidates were presented with uh, a disaster on an island and they'd been asked to help by the local governor. Has anybody worked out how long it will take once the, um, the cargo ship has been notified? It was more a bit of a brainstorming, bouncing ideas off of each other and trying to take away the best part of everybody else's idea. I think one of the things that helped the most was having practiced a lot of speed distance time calculations so that when you're under the pressure you can sort of step back and still be able to do those calculations. For some candidates, day three ends with a swimming assessment. It's the final day, and Kevin has been presented with a problem to solve on his own. So, number one, within the context of the setting, who are you? Uh, we are a group of five officer cadets, and we've just completed one week's exercise. And what are you waiting for? We were waiting to be airlifted out of the area by helicopter. And what happens with a helicopter? Uh, the individual the problem is a make-believe scenario, but there is no ideal solution. There could be a number of options that they could choose. It's quite daunting when you first come into the situation. However, you soon settle down um, once you've answered uh, a few sim more simple questions and, and the questions become more and more complex as you go through. What I'd like you to do now is to outline your chosen plan. No details at this stage. Half an hour to pack the bags, leave at 14.30. Um, arrive at RAF Welton three hours, 40 minutes I'm later. Not too much about the timing, but just okay. uh, I'm looking yep. for the outline of the plan that you looked as an alternative. Yep. Uh, the six of us would walk to RAF Welton. You have to digest a, a large amount of information rapidly. You are always pressed for time and under pressure, so you have to focus in on perhaps one solution and work out the detail for that as quickly as possible. OK, team, our task is to get from this line here to the finishing box with the white platform on it, with all of our equipment. Our equipment is... The command situation exercise places the candidate in the lead of the syndicate, and they're required to complete a practical task, getting the team from the start line to the finish line in a certain amount of time. 
Can we try and see whether that plank reaches from that platform onto the okay. top of the drum? Good work, Six. The qualities we're looking for in this exercise really are confidence, influence and control over the group. Five, if you can swing the tyre back. The problems I had during the exercise uh, was mainly time. Um, it took a, a long while to get uh, people across and the plank back. Also, um, using partial bridges with people as a counterbalance, it wasn't working. Get as far as you can and then jump onto the platform. OK, that's definitely not working, so we're going to have to bring the plank back here so we can get one more person up there, OK? Three, Three. two, one. Go. Make some work, guys. That's good. I think I fared it reasonably well. Um, we obviously didn't complete the task, but uh, hopefully uh, the uh, leadership side of it kind of uh, showed fairly well, but um, we'll see, have to wait and see on that score. You'll be pleased to hear, Juliet Syndicate, the exercise phase is now over. All that remains is for us to tidy up a few administrative points. At the end of the whole selection procedure, the candidates are all given a very brief interview. But at this stage, we won't tell them whether or not they've been selected for RAF service. Well, all that remains for me is to thank you for coming, wish you all the very, very best in the future, and a safety and health. When the candidates leave the selection centre, they will have no idea how they've done, whether or not they're going to be successful. That will happen in about three weeks' time, when we will write to them and give them that news. The whole selection process has definitely been very challenging, because um, it's your one chance to show that you've got what it takes to be an officer. It's been difficult because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but um, I'm glad I stayed on. I've tried my hardest, I've tried to stay focused. The initial testing process has uh, made me realise how difficult it is to going to be to go on to be a pilot, um, but I'm looking forward to the challenge, and being on a station has made it all so much more real. When the letter box flap goes, I should be the first to run downstairs to see if that letter has arrived.